Hello and welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to discuss the second half of section 3.1 in our book and let's jump straight in. Here I have my notes from, our, from the last video and the key point was that we estimate an expectation using the formula listed under 2. Before we really start, I just want to say that I've spotted a mistake here. Hopefully you have all found this mistake already. On the left hand side where it currently says expectation of x, if you look on the right there's an f. Though what we should have written here is expectation of f of x as it reads now. Hopefully you all spotted this. On the left hand side it should have read expectation of f of x. And this is the formula we are going to use now and we are trying to understand a bit better in this video. Let's have a start. I write here the formula for reference again and I give a name to our estimator. So our estimator I want to call ZNMC where N is the sample size and MC is short for Monte Carlo and copying from the previous slide that is 1 over N sum J from 1 to N F of XJ where XJ J goes from 1 to n, are independent and identically distributed copies of x. And our idea was that z n m c can be used as an estimator for the expectation of f of x. And we expect that the estimate gets better and better as n increases. To illustrate that, I want to start with example 3.3 .3 in the book. And in this example, we choose x to be normally distributed. So x would be normally distributed with some mean mu and some variance sigma squared. And assume we want to estimate the expectation of sine of x. So that is our task from example 3.3. .3. Now we need to line this up with our estimate. So first thing we see f is sine in this case. So here we need to say f, we didn't pick this before, for this example we pick f of x equals sine of x. And I chose this expectation because probably you can work it out analytically, but it is not so easy. So applying our methods makes sense. We don't know what the value is, but we can get an estimate for this expectation using ZNMC. So ZNMC is... Well, there is not much to substitute, sum j from 1 to n, the whole sum divided by n, and now we plug in f is sine, so sine of xj, and we choose x1 up to xn, normally distributed, mean mu variance sigma squared, and they are independent and identically distributed. To see how that really works, I'm going to show you how we get numerical values for this estimate in R. So our aim is, let me just write that here. What we know is for a Monte Carlo estimate, we need many random samples, which are IID copies of X. So we first need to do that. And in R that is rather easy. So well, let's first pick a mu, say mu is one, and sigma is also one. Then if we want to generate 1000 independent random variables which are normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, what we would do is we would just write r norm, then how many we want, say a thousand, and then mu and then sigma. One thing to look out for is the second argument here, sigma is the standard deviation and not the variance. So that is different to the mathematical notation where when we write n mu sigma squared, the second argument would be the variance and not the standard deviation. So let's try these commands. So I run mu equals 1. You see at the bottom I have now a new variable mu with the value 1. I run sigma equals 1. Now I have a new variable sigma which has the value 1. And now I run x is r norm 1000 mu sigma. And you see at the bottom I have now a numeric vector with elements ranging from 1 to 1000, where the first values are 0 0.137, 2.554, 2.194 and so on. There are 1000 numbers in this vector. And the Monte Carlo estimate is straightforward. It's the average of f of these values. So what we do is just mean of sine of x. And that is our Monte Carlo estimate. 
So the estimate we get here is 0.493. One special aspect of these estimates is that they are computed using random values. These x, the xj in the nodes are random. If I compute the estimate again, I'll get a different value because the inputs are random. Let's do that again like this. So what I get is 0.5147. Run it again, 0.5206. Run it again, it's 0.5519. So that is one aspect of Monte Carlo estimates we need to think about a bit, that the estimate itself is random, even if the quantity, these are estimates too, the expectation of sine of x, that is not random, that is the expectation. And we discussed already the estimates should go better if n is large. So let's introduce n here. Let's say n is 1 million. Let me see. That's six zeros. And I write n here. Let's run all of these commands again. So now the values should fluctuate less. Let's do that a bit. You see now they are all very close to 0.51. So here's 0.510. 0.5101, so it's a bit different, but not so much. 0 0.511, 0 0.510, so you see by increasing n, the estimates got more stable, and that we will see later is what one would expect. This concludes our section about how to compute Monte Carlo estimates, and although this is the end of this video, in the next video we will learn how to use Monte Carlo estimates to estimate probabilities and to estimate integrals.